So if anyone wants to so ask any questions, to... I'll be monitoring the chat and uh, I'll pick, we'll probably pick out a handful of um, good questions to ask towards the end. So we'll try not to disturb Dennis's sort of uh, preparations for the document, and letting him sort of carry on with his flow. So Dennis right now is weighing his beans. Weighing beans and um, I'm gonna use like 19.8 grams of coffee uh, for this. It's a blend, it's um, Ethiopian and uh, Guatemala. Nice. Yeah, this. So what, what uh, how how uh, how many beans are we using for this um, recipe, Dennis? Uh, nineteen point eight gram. Okay. Nineteen point eight gram. Are we, are we using a eighteen or a twenty gram basket? Uh twenty gram basket. Cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a spray because um, niche has a lot of static, so with the spray is less messy. But I tried both. I tried both uh, with the spray and without the spray. The result is almost similar, but it's just that the, when drying out, it's much more messier without the spray. So it will let it make the, the, the grinding much more even, much more stream. Yeah, I find, I find towards the tail end of the grind with the niche, it, it, yep. it tends to have a lot of static, right? And you can get a lot of. Uh, Coffee grounds to go towards the outside of where you're dosing. So I yeah. think water water helps with the static, as you mentioned. So I'm gonna use this um, a ring funnel. So when I grind, when I catch the ground, I try to uh, land the ground over here instead of over here, because it will build up from. Let's say I catch ground over here, it will build up. Um, extra dense in the middle. So that will make the whole uh, extraction, the water just run over here instead of evenly. So let me show you how to do it. Now this camera is fixed, but then you can, you guys can see, uh, I believe you guys can see a little bit. So I'll just move the niche just run a little bit so you guys can see it. All right. Okay, let me check the dosage. Yep, a little bit more. That's a bit more. I think we need some top up. Okay, just nice. So I will just leave, I will leave polar filter on a flat surface. It's very important. I do not, um, I do not rake like this. I'm going to use a puff rake, all right? So I'm going to leave this on resting on the flat surface. So what I'll do right now, I'll just poke this into the bottom and do a ring shape, circular ring shape. So for me, with this piece, I will just do twice for like this. Following, I'll just following do a middle part of the tap. Then third, I'll do on the surface. Okay, so right now, I distribute evenly the three layers. 
So right now, what I'll do, I see some um, unevenness on top. I'll just do some zigzag to even up, even down the surface. All right, done. So I'll tap once. So I'll, I I like to hold this to tap it, so I have uh, much more in control, right? Much more stable. So I just tap like this. Done. So what I do right now is use the tamper. Okay. Use this hold down, straight grease, then tamp down. A little bit twist. Boom, that's it. Okay. So if you want to twist more to polish on the, the surface, it's really up to you, personal preference. Let me grab a cup. Can't really show you the, the, the tiger stripes because it's right now already placed my uh, the camera's face with wire. Me, grab. Tear the, the scale, okay. Cool. Shall I make a milk coffee, Paul? Um, what do you milk coffee or black? You can make a milk coffee, that's fine. Okay, Milton, uh, if it's for your morning coffee, make it however you want. <laughs> All right, then let me steam some milk. A little bit more. So the position of this is right in the center. Flat, I'm holding it flat. And then I'm going to place it on the other side, off center, so it will swirl, right? So move down the picture a little bit, then move back up to stop the chirping sound. Let it swirl until your desired temperature. Done is hot. <clears throat> what I like to do, I like to transfer and then keep it simple. Beautiful. Job done, Paul. <laughs> Always good in the morning. <laughs> okay. Y'all can see it. Cool. And drink some coffee. So let me switch back the camera. Then for me to further um, explain a little bit. Bye. Hello, everyone. So, uh, do we have any questions over here on the chat? Can't I see really it. Know. I've just asked if anyone has uh, got any questions. Oh. So, um, 
there, there are so many types of um, of uh, pub preparation. There are so many tools out there in the market. I used to use um, a leveler. A leveler. Um, the, the, the only thing that I think that leveler works is it level. It level the surface and um, it, it makes newbies easier to tamp um, in a very even surface. So that, that's a coffee distributor or level would work. But in terms of, um, for my personal, personal experience, in terms of extraction, in terms of uh, the taste, I would say just very, very minor of uh, very minor taste improvement in terms of comparison between with a leveler and without a leveler, just tam straight away after the ground. So that's, that's my final. So, but then there's very simple, there's very, there's very good thing about the leveler, the leveler, which is <clears throat> when in a cafe situation, it's a very busy situation, we have newbies, we have seniors, we have juniors. So a leveler will create um, even of the puck. So everyone will almost ham. Um, there's very minimal of risk of tamping unevenness in my experience. So uh, we have questions over there, Paul. It pops up just uh, for Luca, seconds. you're asking about some sort of improvement and better and cosplay characteristics in the cup what that means. So I think um, I think Dennis is talking about um, the difference between level and a traditional tamper mm -hmm. uh, without a leveling plate, mm -hmm. uh, and um, I guess you're trying to tie to relate it to a commercial environment where you may have more than one barista using the, mm -hmm. the, the same piece of hardware that you're using. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I agree with Dennis in that it is um, it it kind of um, makes things more consistent because. Um, tamping is probably mm -hmm. one of the main areas where there'll be yeah. a lot of variables. Yeah. Um, so if we can sort of um, standardize or well, try to make consistent, more consistent in terms of the, the level of the tamping, mm -hmm. um, we will generally find that the uh, quality of the extraction will be better. Yeah. Um, so I guess in the terms of characteristics, we will see a lot more um, more complex and subtle flavors coming out um, mm -hmm. as they're not drowned by sort of uh, over extractive flavors. Yeah, yeah. So um, I believe um, there are a lot of cafes that are building and spend a lot of money on their tempers, on their instruments. But I would say in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, most of the cafe owners, they are not. So um, for example, if they purchase an espresso machine, they will hope that, or they will bargain that the supplier will give them a temper for free. All right, this is what we get usually. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is what we get. The stock temper is very normal, you know, 58, 58.2 mm, stuff like this. So we, we, we do not get um, as much of uh, fancy stuff like this caliber uh, uh, temper with a level of, right? So, in that case, most of uh, in cafe environments, if they use this during the busy environment, so a lot of newbies, they tend to tempt the coffee pot unevenly like this or like this, whatever, right? So that will create um, the inconsistent of coffee taste. So, um, but then Leveler will fix that uh, problem. So right now Leveler is very cheap in compare of a few years ago. So OCD is, uh, is the pioneer of it. So right now we have a lot of uh, um, generic brand. I would say it's less, it costs less than 10 US dollar. You can get uh, quite okay, quite decent, you know? So, um, but then in compare of level, my personal experience, um, it only solve the problem on the surface, but then not really um, the deeper part of it. I like WDT, 
unlike you know uh, BDT. That's my personal view on this. I just saw we have uh, coming in another question. Now, let me explain the pro and cons of uh, WDT, right? So, um, or part ranking. So now because of WDT, because of this uh, WDT, um, it has infinite possibilities of mistakes. So you require to have a lot of uh, try in error. I try uh, sometime. I try some other beans. I try on the uh, on. Some other beans I try on like this, doing things like this, a spiral. But then it turns out, you know, it turns out like um, channeling. So, so uh, that's why I, I change it into like this, a donut, a circular donut, much more better. So um, sometimes I use on the zigzag and it turns out channeling as well. So by doing this, it helps you significantly improve the taste of coffee, but then you have infinite possibilities of mistake in my experience. Yeah. So you have to find your own way probably your coffee beans is not suitable for this. And um, personally, I don't think there's one style of uh, puff rating or there's one style of WDT works for all the beans that you have. So um, I try other beans, it doesn't work on spiral. I try some other beans, it works on spiral. So you have to find out yourself on that, on that, uh, on that, uh, the, 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 what do you call that, raking. Yeah. The rating pattern, yeah. Do do you find you are using the same um, pattern uh, with the puck mm -hmm. rake, or do you find mm -hmm. you're maybe doing a certain thing and then viewing and then readjusting? Do you find mm -hmm. you do the same thing all the way, or does it depend on on how it has gone on on the way? No. So far, what I've shown you just now is the repeatable result. Mm -hmm. So if I fine tune just a little bit, if I just change a little bit, it will get channeled easily. So it, it's very, very, um, like I said, it's, it has infinite possibilities of mistakes. So you have to find your own way. So I've been, before this, I've been trying out, um, I believe I've been trying out a few bags of beans. Let's try out which one works for me. So, um, you have to find your own way. So there's no certain um, rating pattern works for all. So this thing is very versatile, I would say. We have questions just now, I have an answer, right? Yeah. Um, Kay Rana uh, is asking about the WD tool. Um, does the needle size or placement orientation make a real difference? So we've kind of gone with the uh, placement and what we do. Um, with the needle size, um, I believe our needles are 0.4 mm. Yes. Um, I think we've done some R&D in that any, any needles bigger than that will actually increase the level of channeling. Um, mm. So that, I think that's why we've kind of settled with the, with the size of the needles there. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of hog tools, I personally don't have any experience with them, um, mm -hmm. but they do seem to, it is quite um, an intense piece of equipment. Uh, from what I mm -hmm. remember, it, it's, it's like a, a framing piece of apparatus that, that has many needles and, and pushes in. Poke it inside uh, and you rotate yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, and I think when you, when you actually release it, I do remember seeing many, many holes in, mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. and that's where you tamp from. Um, from the extraction videos I've seen, they do seem uh, quite good in terms of effect, but in terms of taste, uh, I, I have no opinion on that. So I don't know mm -hmm. whether you've used the hog tool or not, Dennis. I, 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 I have no, I have not, I have not used, I have no experience on that. But then I saw a lot of posts in Instagram that promoting this tool. 
But then they always show after the pub prep and the video stop from there. But they never, they've never have one shot of uh, showing the tools, you know, they deliver it, they uh, do some pub prep and then straight away, they put into the machine and show the extraction. So that's the funny part that I, I was trying to do a lot of research on this, um, this part, but then most of them, they stop right after the time. The video shows until there. So they never show up until the real result of um, the extraction. Was it, what does it look like? But they never show. So this, this I found it very funny. I, I have uh, no idea why. So I'm still searching for um, any proper re legit uh, result of this. But then on my personal experience with uh, with uh, uh, pub preparation I did just now, um, the taste of it um, is much brighter. The body, I would say much in, in, in summary, is much more balanced in compare of I can without doing any pub preparation. It's very harsh. Um, the yes. most of the tasting notes is not out. And uh, sometimes two tails, sometimes three tails extraction. So <laughs> it's very funny. So, and uh, so, yeah, it helps, it helps uh, uh, on, uh, on that side significantly. I usually drink one cup of milk coffee in the morning. The rest are just uh, uh, espresso shot itself. I don't like to mix my shot with water. Do we have more engagement from the crowd over here? We do. So someone, Marco, asking about B plus or paper filters on the top of the pack in ah. terms of rig, rig extraction. Have you, have you have, have that experience? Got round style? Uh, no, but I looked into it quite a lot um, when I was looking into puck integrity, uh, especially mm -hmm. with light roast. Um, mm -hmm. I felt that it would benefit the puck integrity, especially in the last portion of the extractions. Um, mm -hmm. So you can really draw out the, la uh, um, um, the flavors that are still um, yet to be drawn out. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. the light roast beans are, are more soluble. Uh, mm -hmm. But in terms of um, actually playing around with the B plus screen and paper filters, uh, not mm -hmm. not so much. Um, okay. I think personally, when if I had a uh, let's say a large flat burrs, I would more likely be using this technique to try and um, mm -hmm. slow down my extraction to a certain extent uh, because mm -hmm. of the fast flows caused by the the, the flat okay. burrs. So I uh, heard I heard it's much more clarity in the shot. Right? Is yes, that correct? And because it, it filters out a lot of oil yes, and yes. a lot of coffee ground, right? Yeah, I, I think that, that, that should be... Uh, I just saw some uh, Instagram posts as well that uh, someone is producing um, the re reusable reusable uh, filter right. that they can place on top of the coffee pot, you know? So unlike uh, previously, most people, they will use AeroPress and then cut the size, AeroPress filter, paper filter, then cut, cut the size and place it on top of coffee bed. So right now they have a dedicated size of it that it's not paper, but then it's washable, it's, re it's reusable. That's meant for this now. So it's, it's kind of like the mesh, similar, I think similar it's to- like, Yeah, it's yes. like a mesh, yes, right. that's correct, yeah. yeah. But I never experienced on that, so I, I don't I think know. Some people are even tamping on top of the screen, right? Or are they tamping and then putting the screen on top? They, after they tamp, they put the screen on yeah. top. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. The, yeah. Saying this, it, uh, that's the B <laughs> to the screen, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they tamp and then they place the filter on top, the mesh on top. Yeah. That's the thing. So I, 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 in essence, we're, we're talking about the B plus screen, which is a modification of the uh, AeroPress filter on the top, right? Yes. Um, and Luca is saying that it's one millimeter thick and quite heavy. 
So yeah. I, I guess it being that thick, it would also uh, reduce the headspace, which is kind of referring mm -hmm. back to Marco's question uh, on its relation with the spaces. So um, I think we could presume that the, if you used a beepless screen, um, it would further reduce your headspace within your um, group head um, mm -hmm. and would affect the, the effectiveness of the spaces. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess in essence, we're saying it would affect the, the spaces uh, relation to extraction, but in terms mm -hmm. of how and what flavors uh, would, or how it would reflect the flavors, uh, I'm not mm -hmm. entirely sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally don't have experience with them. Um, but have you had any experience with the spaces in, in any machines? Uh, um, I, I believe with that space is a concern, probably should use a larger basket, for example, 22. Mm -hmm. 22 gram, right? So, uh, but then if let's say you use 20, then you can probably fit in 18 or 19 grams of uh, those. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Around Alonje shots. Um, restricting flow. So I'm kind of um, thinking all out loud now with the, if it does reduce the headspace, obviously mm -hmm. it would reduce the, well, restrict the amount the coffee cook, cook could expand. Mm -hmm. um, so I think with what you're saying with a larger basket, if you're using a mm -hmm. people's screen and a spacer, I think that totally mm -hmm. makes sense um, because mm -hmm. you're not sort of inhibiting that expansion um, mm -hmm. and during yeah. pre-fusion and therefore mm -hmm. your, your, your ability to extract uh, is mm -hmm. better. So essentially you're not getting any dry spots at the bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. We get full streams. Yeah. Coffee and some Yeah, right? evenness of the, the streams, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Marco's mm -hmm. saying he is um, struggling with his flow that is slightly too fast on his Legome uh, high uniform burrs. So. Mm -hmm. I presume he's using the, the P64 grinder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Optional. So I guess that's why he's uh, uh, possibly looking into the experiment with the B plus filter. Mm -hmm. And you move from niche. Um, it's, uh, do you have any experience with the Legome, Dennis? Uh, no, I do not have. Yeah, legume optional. Yeah, I heard that. But but I think the stock stock grinder legume is meant for um, filter. But then if let's say you want if you want to change it, you have to pay more to change into espresso um, uh, burr. Okay. Not sure. So uh, I mean, in local they, they sell that way. So if you want to have more um, for espresso grinding bird, so you need to have, you need to pay more. But then I have no experience on Legome. Okay. Um, I was, uh, I had um, a very recent uh, Excel, XXL um, user um, just received theirs and uh, ended up um, coming into the factory to do some experimentation because he wasn't sure with his extractions what was going on. Um, he was questioning his own book prep as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was essentially moving on from a Mazza um, mm -hmm. to the Legome. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's experienced very similar experience with Marco in that he's found that the extraction is very fast, flow rate. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that is down to the high uniform burrs um, mm -hmm. producing less fines. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it kind of goes back to the uh, diaspora mantra of grinding finer. Um, mm -hmm. Even I was very. Um, uh, surprise on how far we needed to grind in order to get a, a, a decent extraction. And mm -hmm. um, we were almost back to zero on the, on the grind. Mm -hmm. um, but um, as soon as we got familiar with the Legome burrs and, and what they were doing, um, it mm -hmm. got easier to sort of get extractions out. And for um, the user who I was working with, it was, it was almost, um, uh, a visual representation representation that it could be done and then from mm -hmm. that point on he was very uh okay i need to do this and this and this so it was 
uh, a little bit of calibration from his end coming from his old grinder. But mm -hmm. I think, um, uh, I guess what Marco is doing is trying to find the right path with his equipment, with the things that he could source to, to get mm -hmm. to that point. Um, so I guess we could um, ask Marco, is, is, what has is his, um, his uh, extractions been like? And, and uh, if he is, you know, got enough courage, maybe we could see his uh, workflow a bit later on and we yeah, can yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. see the improvements. Okay. So, so I don't know how Marco would feel about um, coming on camera yeah. a bit later. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, setting up, Marco, how about setting your, uh, getting your camera set up right now? And uh, when you're ready, we can. Uh, yeah, so we can have a clearer picture of uh, what's going on over there. Ah, Luca has um, also got some SSP uh, high uniform burrs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So okay. um, yeah, if you're if you're willing to um, pull some shots on um, what a, a high uniform burr flow rate looks like, Luca, that will be that will be great. Yeah, I can I can um, dial in. Um, we go. Shots. Hi guys. Um, Hello, Luca. I was just thinking I've I've actually got a bunch of birds, so I can show you guys some of what we're talking about. Um, this this is the ninety eight millimeter low uniformity, and you can see that it's it's dirty, so it's got a lot of um. It's got a lot of coffee in it, which is going to be relevant to what I'll show you. This is the high uniformity. So you can see that they're, they're not that different in terms of geometry. And these, mm -hmm. these will be different geometry from the high uniformity in the Legom mm -hmm. because th that is an entirely different burr. That is a filter burr that has different geometry here. Yeah. But the relevant point that I want to show you guys is if you take the burrs and you stack them up like this, this is quite hard to see, but mm -hmm. look at the size of the outfall gaps, the mm -hmm. hole in that. So that's quite, you can see these holes are quite large. And so that, that will set the size of the particles and the mix of fines and stuff like that that you get. Whereas if you look at the high uniformity, these are the high uniformity that SSP sell for espresso. Mm -hmm. It's like oh, them, yes. exactly. So they give you very different grinding properties. See if I put them on top of each other, you can see that the the black dots that are the holes in the upper set, which is the low uniformity, are much much larger than the black holes that you can see from the side of the high uniformity set. Yes. So the high uniformity set is giving you higher uniformity in the espresso grind range, I assume, mm. because it's got those cuts that are shallower, so that so that it has to be higher uniformity. Whereas yes. with when you put it closer together, we'll have a bigger mix of fine and coarse particles, which will give you quite different characteristics, I assume. But who knows? Because who knows anything yeah. about those, right? <laughs> yes, I, I suppose and, unless you're you're really keen and want to put it through a sieve, like uh, uh, and really find out the particle distribution, we'll, we'll we'll never really know. But yeah, and Thanks. also Paul, and uh, one more tip, right, for Marco, that uh, probably he needs to um, do some maintenance on the group head. <laughs> Because me myself personally, I face some um, the same problem. When um, I received my decent about March, then I never did any um, deep cleaning on the brasses, the upper brass and lower brass and the shower screen. I always do some back flushing and uh, maintenance. But then recently I I saw my shower screen dripping out very fast. Right, so it is no longer droplets, it's no longer showering. It's like, you know, it's just like, how do you call that? Um, it's just like open the pipe of water, <laughs> drizzling out. So, but then uh, Paul, Paul uh, advised me to take the brushes, upper brass, lower brass, all soaked into the detergent overnight. Then um, I placed the position of the screen back to, uh, the normal position right now it works back again 
I don't know, probably this is one of the options you should uh, explore, Marco. Do some maintenance of your uh, on your group head. Right? Do you agree, Paul? Yeah, I, I totally <laughs> agree. <laughs> <laughs> maintenance is very important. Um, okay. especially if you want to repeat the results that that you've been uh, you know chasing for so long you know it's 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 uh, heartbreaking for me when uh, when you know you're trying to do something you repeat it and you know all of a sudden mm -hmm. it's 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 yeah, kind of not it doesn't work. Good. so yeah yeah it's a very good point uh, yeah okay. I, I, I believe so i believe so <laughs> it's very important as well <laughs> I think Marco wrote something to us. Oh, that's very interesting. So he's saying if we um, set this RPM speed uh, to a higher setting, the machine will, uh, it's still new, 60 shots. I'll try. So he's saying you would produce more finds at higher speeds. Ah, so I, I believe that Lagone P64 has a, a variable RPM, which you can set. Um, mm. Uh, from my sort of research, it's kind of the usefulness of the variable RPM. Um, we're not quite sure on how useful it is. The only thing mm. that is uh, that stuck out in my mind was uh, to try and uh, clear the grounds of retention at higher speeds. So I don't know whether uh, Marco is experiencing just the fines coming out um, mm. and they're just being disturbed, dispersed at the higher RPM or whether um, it is, as he's saying, um, it, it produces more fines at a higher RPM. Um, mm. Yeah, it's, it's debatable. Um, yep. Lower RPM will give a little faster flow. Okay. Would that be because it's more accurate grind or a lower RPM? I'm not sure. Mm. Um, this is all with the, with the realm of, uh, grinders. It's, it's trying to get to know the grinder, um, and how it affects your extractions. Um, as I mentioned to Luca, it's very difficult to understand what is going on with your particle size, unless you're really sort of sieving out your, your particles yeah. and, and, and and finding out that way. Um, mm. You may be able to taste it though, if your uh, shots are very dark. I have an interesting question, Dennis, in that before, um, let's say we use the uh, WDT, what were you mm -hmm. doing in terms of put prep, in terms of like, before we, you, we came to the decent system or, or before you came to the WDT put rake? I was using um, the leveler. Right, yeah. I was using leveler. Um, not because I was hoping the shot getting better, but then I was hoping that, okay, I'll make sure I do not tempt um, unevenness. Yes. That's what I hope for, but then, um, I've tried some other with hands as well. The north, uh, north, you know, the north, uh, well, south, the, west, the east, grooming? Uh, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tried stock, stock flat. Mm -hmm. But then, hmm, not really, not really uh, effective in my own opinion. I would say. Yeah. yeah. I I guess why I'm asking this is less just in case there is anyone watching who doesn't have a pug break. Uh, mm -hmm. What techniques would you would you recommend if they didn't have a put break? Um, mm -hmm. I would. Hmm, it's very debatable for that. Um, I would. I would. I would recommend a leveler. Yeah. Yeah. But then there are so many generations of leveler right now. Used to have uh, four blades. Right now they have two blades, and uh, mine is second generation. But then uh, a lot of retention, a lot of static, a lot of retention. So once I level it, then I put it up. There's a lot of uh, retention on the, the, the instruments. Not sure, but then right now, the newer generations, they claim has uh, zero retention. And with, uh, because it's designed such a way, there's no more retention. So I, I would, if let's say, if you do not want to go 
um, for complicated stuff. Leveler is a good way to go, right? Okay, yeah. Gagner also has frame size. Oh, very interesting. So Ganya, who is um, a very, uh, quite highly regarded in our diaspora community in that he created some of the adaptive profiles from what I mm -hmm. believe. And he has analyzed some of the distributions uh, and was unable to find, pick up the finds from the high uniform burrs. So that's very interesting. Um, so I started um, looking into uh, espresso without fines from um, one of the quite well-known baristas in Hong Kong. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he did also participate in the WBC and mm -hmm. he formed the, the, uh, the cafe cupping room. Uh, and his name's Derek. Um, mm -hmm. He initially started grinding and putting uh, his, his grounds through sieves before mm -hmm. he was making the espresso. And mm -hmm. the first time I tried it, I was, I actually didn't understand what he was doing. <laughs> it was so, so far away from espresso that I was scratching my head and, 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 and sort of really sort of trying to understand what he was trying to achieve. And mm -hmm. Through my own experimentation, uh, sieving it myself and um, and trying a lot of hand brews at home and then espresso at work, it was, I just found that it wasn't what I was looking for in terms of espresso at that point in time with what mm -hmm. I was chasing. Um, mm -hmm. But what I did learn uh, going back to this subject was it, if, especially with lighter roast coffees, um, if the less fines you have, the finer you can grind your coffee mm -hmm. and um, the higher opportunity to get a really sweeter shot. Um, mm. So I think it was a case of, you know, me not really understanding what he was achieving. I was still on mm -hmm. the dark roast sort of uh, level of what I was mm -hmm. chasing, thick sort mm -hmm. of ristretto styles. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, especially when you start playing with the high uniformity birds, it's, it's very... Um, it does challenge the way you think about espresso. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think I've read a few times of um, people sort of trying yeah. to do something with, with their coffee, but not sort of understanding that, you know, certain things will achieve certain things, but you can't, you can't do it the other way around. You can't sort of say, mm -hmm. I'll use high uniform burrs and, and get chocolate flavors out all the time. So it's, it's very mm -hmm. unlikely that you will get a lot lot of those chocolatey flavors with the high uniform burrs. So I guess it's, um, it's very personal preference, uh, mm -hmm. but how it relates to your pup prep. Um, in general, you, you, like say, you might consider the B plus screens or uh, maybe even a, a lesser dose. So your recipe doesn't have to do as much extracting the flavors out. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what are your experiences with um, roast types of coffees and how you would prepare for them? Mm, I, I started off with medium to dark roast and uh, just like you started off with drinking ristretto shots. Yeah. That, that's always easier for a newbie, right? So, but then I've been trying on uh, uh, going lighter and lighter roast. Um, I, I, I started off really love um, light roast with longer shots. I think last year, like really, really go into a lighter shot because I like, I'm starting to really love the fruitiness of light roast. Yeah, starting yeah. to explore lungo, starting to explore a bit longer shots, um, higher temperature, you know? So um, before that, I was drinking ristretto shots. I was drinking um, long black, so I've been cutting down a lot of, uh, you know, water dilution into the shots yeah. since last year. So uh, I think with decent coming along the way, it's just perfect timing. A lot more things to explore. Yeah. So many things. It's so innovative and so, I know, unorthodox, I would say. Yeah. And yeah. Compared yeah. of uh, yeah. Um, other traditional, you know, it's very, very um, locking my hands on whatever I can control. So. Is, is, is really mind-blowing for me right now to uh, with so much control. 
on especially on the temperature and uh, you know accuracy and stuff like that. So I, I think the uh, the amount of data that you get when you first start on the machine um, mm -hmm. can be a little bit intimidating. Um, mm -hmm. But what I what I really loved about it was being able to learn, start learning from the graph to sort of understand mm -hmm. how your puck prep, let's say, let's take an easy example of if you didn't have a leveler on your tamper, mm -hmm. you'd be mm -hmm. able to see that uh, quicker mm -hmm. extraction, and also be able to see that data on there in terms of your uh, mm -hmm. you know, flow rate, you know, what, what possibly went wrong. And I think yeah. that um, data feedback really accelerates your, your pace of learning. Um, mm -hmm. Especially if you have, you know, someone who has experience on the on the machine itself, and and mm -hmm. sort of pointing out things on your graph, and mm -hmm. um, you know, traditionally we were previously watching the flow rate to sort of second guess ourselves to a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, you can still do that, but I think it's mm -hmm. much better to have a combination of the two. Okay, I'm familiar with the flow rate; it looks yeah. like that. But what does it look like on the graph? Um, mm -hmm. I think that's. Uh, really confidence boosting in, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, maximizing what you can do uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the put prep. Um, yeah. The major one for me was uh, channeling, of course. Um, I think we can all agree that any shot will channel. It's mm -hmm. just depending on what you can do to reduce those, those channelings. And yeah. I think the, the yeah. D one you know, helps immensely in that in terms of his pre-infusion. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, our own preparation, what little details in terms of uh, channeling reduction do you find helps the most in your workflow? Channeling reduction, I would say with pop rating and then um, um, channeling with pump rating and then with uh, the tamping as well, the amount of strength of your temp. Mm -hmm. So, um, I use the temp relight. light. All oh, right, okay. I use the temp relight, light and uh, then I find out that, oh, for them, everything is channel, right? <laughs> so, um, and then I try to switch it with this one. Um, it's very heavy. Um, yeah. So always force me to temp hard. So it's lesser. Right now it's lesser channeling, right? So that's the thing. I, I used to think that temping pressure not really in certain extent, does matter. I just think like that. Yeah. I think you will still correct that. I, I think, think, I think yeah, it's, I, very, it's something very small. I think I remember seeing it's less than, actually less than 10 pounds of force you actually yeah. need. It's actually very small. But I think um, in terms of tamping strength, as long as you're above that, that minimum threshold yeah. uh, and your technique is, is relatively good, I think it's, yes. it's, it's all gravy. But then again, um, Probably because I was using some medium to dark rolls. Ah, yes, yes, that would make a difference. Um, yeah, if you go lighter, lighter, yeah, the temp, a little bit harder. <laughs> right. So uh, those that uh, may be uh, not aware, uh, the, the, the roast, pro, roast degree of your beans um, mm -hmm. also relates to how, uh, how much uh, puck integrity you have. So the darker yeah. the roast, the higher the puck integrity. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the low, the lights of the roast, the, the more likely it will fall apart. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, that's that's how I found out. I found out is the hard way. So <laughs> I spent so much of uh, uh, you know of uh, money on the coffee beans, trying to research all this. I I saw four, I saw some questions just now. Um, yeah. Pop up. I think it's been been asked for. Okay. So this is Ben C. Yeah. Uh, Luca is saying, Ben C and I run 98% ultra. Uh, Ted, much results, same trust of flow rate. Yeah. I think Marco been asking me whether I'm using niche. Yeah. Yes, he is. Marco is asking, using the niche or something else with light roasts? Um, okay, before, before I just started to use niche, I think since April. April. Before that, I was using Antim Sco D2. That is commercial 75 mm flat burst. And uh, I've been using that for two years. So um, 
at home, I'm using that. But then at the cafe, I was using um, Super Kaimano with Dosa, 65 mm, titanium coated bird. I think that one, we are not serving light roast, we are serving medium. But at home, I was using Scoby 2, um, light roast and medium roast, whatever. So that's my, that's my only <coughs> grinder at home. So I've been using that for light roast and medium roast. Um, in terms of a pot prep, were you using the same size baskets for your light roast and your dark roast, or were they different? Um, I would, and, yeah, I guess I'm trying I to think, say, trying to see difference in, are you perhaps preparing it differently with a light roast as compared to a dark roast? Mm -hmm. I think I always stick with the, the amount that I, my, of my recipe. Let's say it's 18 to 19, I'll just use 18 grams. Let's say it's 20, I'll just use 20. But I'm not more than 20. That's always the case. I, I'm not using a dose more than 20. So for example, light rose, I will, I will use 18 uh, gram of basket. So the dose usually is 18, 18.5, somewhere around there. So that's my way to go. Um, I used to use VST as well, basket is uh, my favorite. So there is the stock, stock basket is always mm, not so consistent. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's not consistent and they always channel. And uh, I mean, the VST to me before this, uh, I think we, I'm using VST or, or this one, 18 or 20. A lot of people seem to have a um, very good success with VST baskets. Um, mm -hmm. Now, compared to the stock basket, <laughs> Was um, how was the shape compared to the VST? So the VST is very uh, straight, straight, yeah, uh, straight, and, yeah. and generally quite deep, depending on how yeah. how big the basket yeah. is. Um, mm -hmm. How how did that compare to the stock basket? And and what is your theory on why that might change the? No, I I <laughs> I thought of generic <laughs> basket that uh, I just going through the holes of the basket. Some are not even through. So, so, yeah, that, that makes me a, like a little bit of uh, you know um, not so good experience on that. So uh, again, um, uh, first thing first, the 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 holes are some of the holes are not even um, hole. It's like I don't know what you call that. So it's, there's no hole on some holes. So um, again, some baskets is very weird for generic uh, espresso machines. So some are very deep. More, much more deeper than VST. And uh, that, that makes me just straight away, I do not want to use it, just put it aside, put back my VST basket in it. But then, um, VST basket is very nice, very good in terms of usage. But then if you want to find out what's the size of a basket, right, I have to take out. Yes. And uh, there's an enclave over there in, in the, uh, <clears throat> no, no, it's not. It's not the stock of a decent basket. I'm talking about other espresso machines basket, some uh, unbranded uh, uh, basket. So, um, so where was I just now? So, uh, okay, VST basket. One thing about VST basket is very nice to use. It's very good, and then the position of the holes is very nice, very consistent. But then, uh, my basket. When I want to know what's the size, let's say I wash, I put it there alone. So I want to know what's the size of the basket I have to go through and have a look, right? But then, if let's say something very different about decent, it's stable here. 20 grams, 18 grams, right? So let's say this is some other brand, I have to take it out and have a look at the size. The basket, what size is this am I using right now? So that's what I like about this decent basket. So whenever I find a doubt, am I using the right size? I'll just have the oh damn, I'm using the wrong size. I switch it again. So yeah, that's a, that's the thing. That's a that's a, a something very different uh, uh, in terms of uh, user experience to me. Yeah. What yeah, about you? Paul, what do you think about other basket? 
There are a lot of uh, baskets in the market. I have not tried yet. Uh, Pullman, I believe, Pesado, right? So I have not, to be honest, I have no, not, no experience on all these yet. I've, I've used a lot of EST, um, mm -hmm. a lot of the Lamazoka stocks. Um, yeah. But I find um, the stocks generally, like, um, I find they're very... They're more harsher on the on the on the espresso shot. They're not as clean um, as the BST at times, and and I think if you basically asking me the general difference between baskets is is usually it, it, is sweetness when it comes to me. I, I will generally mm -hmm. taste the sweetness is a lot different from basket to basket, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, it it does depend on the hardware that you use with it, um, mm -hmm. and I guess that's why I was asking sort of. How would you choose your 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 you know uh, matching your light roast with your grinder to the basket, or are you keeping everything the same? So I was just curious to sort of uh, uh, see your viewpoint on that. I I try not to complicate stuff. I try to use the same thing with the yep. different uh, materials. I try to use the same thing with different materials that uh, so I know which part I've gone wrong, which one I did wrong. So I know which part is my mistake. So I do not try to uh, uh, complicate stuff. That, that's not the way I am. So yeah, that's, that's why I always use the same basket, same recipe, you know. Um, then if I find something weird about it, so I know. I try to fix things. I try to diagnose. So I know which yeah. part is not really suitable. And, and I think that's very good advice to sort of, anyone sort of starting out is is mm -hmm. try not to change too many things right yeah. um yeah. i guess if you if you change too many things um you, you might not know what what yeah which which change made the difference or which change yeah. made it worse um so that's very good advice um mm -hmm. and especially when you're you're tr trying to experiment what is good for yourself if you really mm -hmm. want to find it out just change one thing and then mm -hmm. see if you can see the difference um yeah yeah in terms of um, changing things, Dennis, um, what, what would be the most common thing you're changing um, to affect flavor? Um, would it, in your preparation, would it generally be, uh, I don't know, uh, your dose or your grinder, or maybe, mm -hmm. maybe in terms of tamping? I don't know if there's any techniques you would use in tamping to kind of um, mm -hmm. help things out. Um, mm -hmm. I guess an example I'm thinking of maybe uh, how dose might relate to extraction time, how you could affect mm -hmm. that with, let's say, tamping strength or something, or mm -hmm. maybe even with the grinder. What would generally would you use to sort of, let's say, uh, build up I, pressure to extend your time? I understand. So let's say, let's say I found this shot in compared to my previous, let's say yesterday, the recipe is, let's say, 30 seconds or 35, right? So today goes back to, we did every exactly thing, every exactly thing. So it goes back to, uh, let's say, it's 22 seconds or 23 seconds, huge jump. So what I'll use, of course, I just change the grind size, that's number one. I will not change the grind size and reduce the dose or whatever, add the dose up. I will not do two things at the same time. So what I'll do, I just do one thing, and see the next shot whether it's changed or not, right? So, yeah. So I would do I would do one I would I would just one make one change at at this at the time. I want to not do uh, more than that, you know. So let's say reduce the grind size. So let's see the next shot again the same, right? Not much of a big difference. So probably I need to um, uh, temp harder or add more dose. I would say like that, but then uh, most of the time with this happening is either the coffee beans are stale or it's time for you to do maintenance on your machine or it's time to do maintenance on your grinder. <laughs> 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 it won't go too far away if you do things correctly. <laughs> That's very good. Um, I think you touched on something um, quite useful for people as well is the state of the beans. Um, yeah. Sometimes, uh, let's say older beans or stale beans they mm -hmm. will react very differently to very fresh beans so what yeah. are you what, are, what would you see with uh, super fresh beans that maybe is only a week old and mm -hmm. let's say hypothetically your cook preparation is quite consistent so mm -hmm. 
Um, what would you see in terms of um, after your puck prep, in terms of, you know, if you're quite happy with your puck prep, but you've got super fresh beans and you just hadn't noticed, what, what, what would be the things you would see um, uh, in terms of after your puck prep? Um, let's say the coffee beans is um, very fresh, let's say, right? So first of all, um, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll answer that later. Yeah, we'll come so to that first later. of all, let's say the coffee beans is very fresh. First of all, um, it's very dilute to me. Number one, the taste is not well extracted. Number two, there are a lot of, um, what do you call it, bubbles on top on the shot. Yeah, yeah. So number three, it's um, sourish. That's usually, that's, that's usually my, my, my experience of uh, very fresh coffee beans, less than a week or less than five days. So that, that's the thing. So you have to let it rest for at least seven to 10 days for best experience. But then um, there are people claim that they will leave the bag open, but that's very risky to me, in my, own, in my own opinion. They will leave the bag open for a few hours, then only start grinding it. And to me, it's a little bit, I am not that urgent to drink that bag of coffee. I just leave it <laughs> rest for another day or two, yes. right? So, so I, I think that there's, uh, I'm not comfortable with doing that, leave the bag open, and then two hours later, I come back and grind it. So I, I'm not comfortable doing it. But I got, I got advice from uh, a few of my friends doing that. Say, they claim it's, hmm, it's, it's, it's nice, it's okay, it's good, you know, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might come from the old uh, 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 Italians where they, you know, they have the, it's pre grounding thing and they knock it out into the porta filter. So yeah. they're the like using two fresh beans, yes, and they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're degassing it in the, in the grinder itself. Mm. Um, <laughs> I, I agree with you in that I would be a lot more reserved in doing that sort of thing. Um, I'm mm. much happier to leave it to one side and let it age appropriately. Um, yeah. In terms of, you know, preserving what you have in there, if you do have it open, you know, mm -hmm. your, your, your temperature could be quite high that day or your mm -hmm. humidity levels could be, you know, very high and it mm -hmm. will affect the quality of being immensely. So um, while it can be effective, I, we, I wouldn't recommend it like you. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, much prefer to yeah. leave it to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Michael Freak's question. And he's saying, I notice when I grind directly into the basket, either center mound or rotating around the basket, immediately before performing puck raking, I have a clear donut extraction. If I prefer deep WDT, it's pretty even start to extraction. This is only me. Am I doing something wrong with puck prep? Um, uh, do you have anything to say with that, Dennis? Um, I, think it, I think you kind of addressed this before in that, some things will not work. Um, mm -hmm. I think in my experience, the simpler it is, the better. The more yes. you start messing with your, with your grounds, the more mm -hmm. chance of inconsistency and something bad happening. Um, mm -hmm. In um, reading online, deep WDT has been shown oh. to improve consistency as compared mm -hmm. to a light WDT. But mm -hmm. um, some people doing a deep WDT have experienced it get worse uh, for yeah. whatever reason it is, whether they're doing it too much or not doing something in terms of homogenizing the, the, the yeah. ground. Um, so in general, we recommend a lighter, lighter rake um, yeah. if they want to experiment with the deep one, yeah. that's fine. Um, yeah. I don't think he's doing anything. I even saw wrong. some people using the toothpick right yeah, yeah, yeah. to do wdt yeah. yeah i saw some with uh i don't know what you call that uh, a very thick diameter of uh, a metal needle yeah. and do wdt as well i'm not really sure uh, which which kind of uh, instrument they're using that claim that deep wdt has a lot of uh, channeling yes i agree with that but then it depends on what kind of instrument you're using yeah yeah um I think we, we mentioned the, the width of the needles that we implement in our puck breaks. I think they're, they're 0.4 mm. So if they're any wider than that, it will actually increase the uh, chances of channeling. So 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very good point you made. It's, 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 it's sometimes it's depending on the thing you're using <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. to do UDT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, Michael. Sorry. Heaven, yeah. Acupuncture of needles. I believe that acupuncture needles come with a lot of sizes. It has 0 0.1 up to 0. I don't know, 1.1.0. Right. So it depends, really depends on the diameter, the size of the, the acupuncture needles that you're using. I think I heard, uh, I think I uh, saw a video of John's video that he was explaining why it's 0 0.4. Why is not less than that? Why is uh, more than that? Why is not more than that? So, um, yeah. So if let's say more than that, basically you create more channel, right? If let's say less than 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that is not effective. Basically you're going through all those, uh, 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 what do you call that, the ground without, doing the job without breaking it, without breaking the clumps. So that's what uh, uh, John explained in the video. Um, if Michael has a camera and is willing to come on, um, maybe oh. you could show us your um, WDT method and, and, and see, see if we can see anything that we, yeah. we, we may think is uh, going wrong. But okay, let's see. Okay. You ready, Michael? So just give just uh, give a shout when you're ready, and then. Uh... Um, just from my own experiments with with the WDT, it's uh, I, I do do the a combination of both from going mm -hmm. from deep to light raking, um, mm -hmm. and I also do the BW BDT. Um, I, I also do question why was I doing BDT and raking at the same time? And um, mm. I could actually get away with just doing uh, WDT, but mm. I find if I also use the distribution while grinding, um, mm. it makes WDT a lot easier. Um, I, can, mm. I find that I can do the same technique going round in circle and then go to a light break um mm -hmm. and it seems to come out quite consistent um mm -hmm. but in in all lessons i think you you could just go straight to WD, uh, wdt uh, mm -hmm. but i i personally haven't gone that route because i've just found success in what i've done so i've not changed the <laughs> changed my method mm -hmm. um but mm -hmm. I, I feel i could simplify it more uh, mm -hmm. but i don't know whether whether you found that you've you kind of kept things that you might not necessarily made sense okay. but it, okay. it, it's working, so you've not changed it. Um, I, I've tried. I've tried on uh, without rotating the product filter and catch the ground. Yeah, I tried that. Yeah, I tried to cut breaking uh, straight away from the coffee ground, from just yep. a little mountain on on in the center. But then, um, no matter how I try, but it always um, donut extraction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's the thing that. Uh, um, the donut is it could it could just the first few seconds just donut from the side, and yes. then the, the middle the center point we just throw up after a few seconds, mm -hmm. so that's very severe and the the the, the taste of the coffee is very harsh very dry. Based on that kind of uh, channeling, so with uh, with moving my product filter catching the ground on the side, so that will have. Um, uh, prevent a lot of less uh, uh, donut extraction, and uh, the shot itself much more balanced. My own, in, in my own uh, opinion, and uh, and the the result is repeatable. Whatever I did just now, whatever I did just now, the results are almost similar to the next shot and previous shots. So uh, this that's my own my my personal opinion on that. Yeah. I have to say, um, before I came onto the D1, um, I never used WDT. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, very much sort of palm distribution. Yeah. And, 
Uh, and yes, there was a mound in the middle. And I, I yeah. would say a lot of my shots did donut, um, mm. but they weren't sort of slow donuts sort of sleeping in. It was kind of yeah. fast sort of uh, yeah. saturation. Um, mm. But by moving to the decent, um, obviously I picked up WDT. Uh, mm. So the extractions were much more uniform when, when saturation had begun. Um, but mm. in terms of taste, um, I kind of agree that the, the, when it does saturate more evenly, it does seem mm. to be a lot more, how to say, I don't know why, I can't quite put my finger on it quite yet, but it does mm. seem better in terms mm. of uh, your clarity of flavors. But mm. I think it's, I don't know, it's, I, 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 cause my shots were extracting as donuts for so long. Um, mm. I didn't sort of really, how to say, I can't really see the, see it in the cup as much as visually. Um, yeah. so, um, this is kind of, cause I'm kind of going back to what right. uh, Luca is saying is what makes you think donuts are a problem? Um, I think, if you have really high quality beans, I don't think a donut extraction is going to affect the quality in your cup too much. If mm. you have, let's say, a less of a quality beans where the proportion of unwanted flavors in the, in the mm. beans is, the, is higher than the wanted, so mm. beans that you would more likely do a one-to-one -one or a, a very close to mm. a double ristretto sort of type shot, um, mm. it would probably make more of a difference. Uh, because yeah. you're going to be extracting quite possibly flavors that you don't want. Um, mm. But I, I, I'd be interested to sort of hear yours and anyone else's sort of comments on whether, you know, their experiences on donut and how they've felt it's affected in their shot. Um, mm. Because I feel it's very, it's quite subjective to a certain extent because it's about yeah. taste. Um, yeah. But essentially, if it's, if you think it's okay and you, you like the taste of it, um, personally, I think that the donut extraction is, is, you know, you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, of yeah. course, WPT will help you a lot uh, in, mm. in, in getting rid of that problem. And it will make your extraction look a lot more beautiful. Uh, yeah. But from my personal experience, it's, uh, it's more in time with uh, the quality of your bean to whether it will affect, how much it will affect uh, what goes yeah. in the cup. I believe Mike is ready for the camera. Excellent. Yeah. Also have the B plus screen there. Ah, ah, all right. Yeah. It is quite the. Well, That's quite thick, actually. This. What's that? That's not quite thick. The yeah. B plus. <laughs> I, I was a little surprised because I, I always saw <laughs> photos of it, but not just quite how thick it was or how substantial it, it feels really. Yeah. Um, so I have some medium roasted decaf here, <laughs> so grinding kind of fine. <laughs> See if I can, I don't know if there's a way to pin the other video, um, but that's my phone facing down. <laughs> than what it used to be. <laughs> That's the show. Sorry, I wasn't able to hear you. That's OK. I was just saying um, that the quality of decaf uh, in the last few years have gone a lot higher. Um, and I was saying, uh, yeah, the, in general, it's you do have to grind a lot finer um, because of the, the, the quality of the bean is, you know, the, I think with the most common one is Swiss, uh, the, the Swiss method where they soak it with water. Yeah. Uh, and then retry it again. I want to say this is a, um, maybe an EA process. It's a uh, Onyx Columbia Galeris decaf. Okay. <clears throat> so I don't know if that's on cam. Yeah. Okay. So normally I would have a better position for this, but it's hard to get a good camera angle. <laughs> 
So if I was doing the puck raking, you know, it's just barely moving it around. But when I'm doing the deep WTT where I don't have the donut extraction, uh, and the lighting is terrible here. Yeah, so it's it's moving it around a, a good amount going deep like that, and then just slowly bringing it back up. But I, I, I just go around in circles, slowly coming to the surface. Something kind of like that. It's hard to see <laughs> with the camera there and blocking. Looks pretty good. Thing. Looks pretty good. We can see. Yeah. I'm checking out the camera on the other laptop. So that's why I was moving away. Ah, gotcha. And yeah, my. I think I probably have too many uh, needles on that. If that's even visible, my homemade tool until the uh, deep end puck rake arrives. I think there's, let's see. I think the main, the main importance is the thickness of the uh, acupuncture needles. Gotcha. Yeah. And then. That looks very good. So I've been pretty happy with that when it's deep WDT. It was just, uh, again, that just doing the, the puck raking after that sort of grind. Yes. Definitely winds up with a donut like every time. Mm -hmm. So I, I haven't done any sort of A-B comparison either to know, does it affect it like noticeably to my own palate? I tend to just do one espresso a day. <laughs> right. Um, I'm also curious, um, does, uh, have you been using the niche for a while now? And is it, is it only, have you only just found out that it's doing this or is it all of a sudden happened? It, it's only recently that I started trying the puck raking. Right, right. I see. Yeah. Um, I, I guess what I'm trying to cancel out is, is if your grinder may need a, a little bit of a clean. I tend to clean it probably about once a month. Okay. Oh, that's, that's great. We're keeping it in good order. Yeah. yeah the, 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 um, if you find, if you don't clean the niche, it, it does produce more clumps. Um, and, and that will, uh, obviously increase your chances of donut extractions. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think I've run into that yet, but I just, it's more of a out of the blue on the weekend. I think it's about time to clean this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, actually, I'll uh, go ahead and pull right. see what I get. Uh, Go ahead and continue the conversation. Uh, I got to wait for the decent to warm up. I didn't have it on. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Okay. Um. So, in in sort of um, looking at donor extractions earlier on, um, me and John also saw a technique where we would. Um, poke a few holes after we've done the WDT mm -hmm. right in the center or create a small little divot with the, with the puck break. And we find mm -hmm. that um, when we do this uh, technique, it's you, you generally very, very rarely see a donut and the uh, extraction comes out a lot more evenly. Um, mm -hmm. So essentially uh, what if let's say Michael has just finished the WDT, just when he, after his table tap, he would either mm -hmm. you know poke a few holes extra in the mid in the center, or just create a little divot after if just before tamping, and that mm -hmm. creates a, a slightly lower uh, bed where where the where the where the coffee will saturate a lot more evenly. Um, whether right. it's our extraction, I don't know, uh, but it looks a lot more beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Did you mean right after the tap, then you poke a few holes right in the center only? Yeah, yeah, I I, I just poke one two. Um, and then, so, so let's say I have here. So after mm -hmm. I've done it, I will just literally poke one, two, or I okay. just do a few circles light on the circuit in the, in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you'll find that, um, 
you know, the extraction is much more even. And if, okay. even if it's not even, it will saturate a lot quicker. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to try that later. Something new. <laughs> I feel like the coffee screen is going to come towards the camera on your phone now, Michael. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, okay. Let me check it out. I'm definitely concerned for my phone here. Especially <laughs> because this isn't dialed in. So if it's a, it's a gush or anything, I, <laughs> I might be pulling the camera away. <laughs> Trying to get something to tilt it up just a little bit more. Oh, and I need to add water. Maybe I'll um, also uh, dose out some coffee and tamp something and show you the uh, divot or the poking that I was just mentioning. Show me a second. Everyone's preparing some coffee right now. I think it's about time. <laughs> this is probably as good as I'm going to get the camera angle. Um, shall I go ahead? Yeah. Let's yes, see. you may. Make sure I got this all right. Okay. In nicely, but quite offset. Michael, are you using a uh, decent temper? Sorry, the machine. Okay. Uh, are you using a decent temper? Uh, yes, the V3. Okay. So that that was kind of what I expected with uh, the deep WDT. Yep. Yep. Uh, if I were to do the the puck raking, it's just it's like a very clear donut for a probably one to two seconds before the middle fills in. Right. Might just prepare another one and try that to see what happens. A B these two. <laughs> My machine's just warming up right now, so I'm just gonna do some coffee. Right, you can see it. Okay, yep. you can so see it. Yeah, put it here. yeah. I think even on the table, we can see it as well. Oh, okay, all right. Yep. You yeah, you see it here? Right there. Yeah, yeah, we can see that. Yeah, Let's move this cable up. So, a very similar technique to Dennis is okay. we will go in small circles, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then once I go around to the top, I'll go to start lifting up halfway. 
and I'm, I'm progressively going uh, higher up as I'm circling around. Now, at this point, I'm going to table tap. Okay. Could have done a little bit better here, but that's okay. But at this point, I'm either going to go one, two, three, right in the middle, or mm -hmm. um, we can just do a, a small circle in the middle here mm -hmm. and create it looser at the top. And then we tap. So what happens is the theory is that the water will penetrate here because there's less resistance mm -hmm. uh, and will distribute the evenness a lot better. I think my machine's just warmed up. Okay. All right. I'm going to prepare this and see if I can get the camera on the extraction. Just bear with me a second. Okay. Right. Hang on. I've got a light here. <coughs> yeah, can I see. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully, you this is your camera safe over there? Is your laptop safe? Kind of. It's kind of upside down, but it'll be all right. Okay. So I've got a light shining underneath now. Okay. Uh, we'll start the extraction. So this is a Londinium. And I will see if I can catch it in here. Just in case. Okay. Mm. All right. Oh, nice. Okay. So it, 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 so even though it didn't come out in even, it, it uh, saturated very quickly from the offset. I could get my grind a little bit finer. I've not calibrated the grinder. But we can see that it came out in um, two streams, but came uh, merged into one stream very quickly after that. Mm. Now, let's say I didn't put the uh, hole in the middle. We would more likely see that extraction to uh, be slower um, or, as you uh, correctly identified, would be the donut extraction coming from the outside. Mm -hmm. so what, so, do you, Paul, what, do you, what do you think Michael's extraction is now? I think Michael extraction was quite good. Um, and um, we have to bear in mind that it is decaf, so it will um, uh, flow a little bit differently. But in mm -hmm. terms of, um, you know, he, he got a good crema, uh, mm -hmm. which, which tells us that he, he extracted it at a good pressure. Mm -hmm. Decaf is very hard to get a good crema. Uh, that's from my personal experience. So uh, <laughs> if, you, if you generally get a good, good crema on a, on a decaf, uh, in, in a good amount of time it is it's generally a good thing um, mm -hmm. I think his extraction was quite uh, it was a little bit offset but I think it was good because the the coffee stream came into one um, in my experience if the if there's multiple coffee streams um, essentially you're extracting different parts of your coffee cook at different rates so over and under extractions will occur um, so that that would be my um, visual cue on how how well the extraction went Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I'm not sure what the graph looked like, Michael. Um, but uh, I would presume that it, it went up to pressure, uh, and your flow rate uh, in terms of milliliters per second was uh, generally quite good. Uh, yes. So you did it. Did manage to keep up to pressure, okay. and your flow rate was above one, which is great. Did drop down, Indeed. and this is the best practice medium. So the limiter did kick in. Yes, I was just about to ask which profile it was. So, yeah, uh, and the wonkiness and the yeah, yeah. The, but that's that's fine. That's me adjusting the the cup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
Yeah. But that's great because you can you can read the data and, and interpret it from there. So, you know, you can cancel that as an anom anomaly. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, I'm going to grind again. Uh, and this time just do a uh, the, the light puck raking. Sure. And see if there's any difference. Trying to do this at this weird angle again. But so if, this is where I'm unsure if I'm doing the puck raking correctly because I'm kind of just like really just very lightly pushing that center mound around a little bit, trying to fill out the uh, the outside, right? Yeah. That is that right? Uh, in in terms of the the puck raking technique that John went over. Yeah, I think um, as long as you keep it consistent, because the danger is that if you're, let's say you go side to side, but then sort of go circular, um, the danger is that you could be affecting it positively or negatively. But if, because you're doing two different techniques, you're not sure which one is, is making the uh, effect, whether it's positive or negative. So I would advise you to, if you're, if you're gonna do circles, stick to circles for now. Um, if you're gonna do zigzags, stick with zigzags and see how that goes. Um, once you find something good, try to do the same thing you did last time uh, to see if you can repeat it. Um, and I think that way you will, you will sort of progress with more confidence um because you know you're not sort of second guess was i doing it like this or you know um so immediately i would say you know rather than sort of bouncing from one part of the puck to another i would you know be more systematic about it and maybe move around in a circle to readjust um but apart from that i think i think what you've done is great um and a great foundation to tap from um it's just the unknown of what what is causing the uh you know, the ill effect that you're that's trying to, what, I guess what we're trying to find out. Right. Uh, I guess my understanding of the puck raking was more of a, you're just visually kind of leveling things out uh, from that center mound. Yeah, I, I said in, in, in essence, we're kind of homogenizing. We're just trying to redistribute the grounds evenly. Um, so, um, you know, we could, let's say have more fines um, or finer particles in one area and that would restrict the flow rate go through there. So all we are doing with the raking is we're sort of mixing these particles more thoroughly and homogenizing it. So it's more, more of an even evenness throughout the puck. Yeah. So yeah, the, what you're describing, I was thinking of as shallow WDT and thinking that puck raking was just just pushing things around, kind of. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, just for, I mean, example sake, I will go ahead and tamp this and see if it, it continues to get that donut extraction like I'd seen. So that's the final outcome of that <laughs> uh, pre-tamping. things around again. Okay. This, this time your ground is a little bit finer, right? You you just 
you adjusted the grinder? Uh, the I, I left everything the same, just to everything make it the, right, cool. the puck breaking right, cool. the deep WDT. Okay. okay. You know, not change too many things at once. Weird. It has like that same offset. Yeah. It seemed like it was a tad flat faster that time too. Um, but you could see like that was very clear donut extraction. Yes. Yeah. A little faster than normal for me. So it seemed to come towards the handle side more, right? Um, for the extraction? It, it seemed like it, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, just offset from the handle. Um, I didn't see you take your tamper out. Now, it could be that when you remove your tamper, you're moving it at an angle towards your chest, let's say, when you pick it up. And that could actually alleviate a little bit more, um, well, you could harm your coffee book after you've tamped at that point. So um, my advice would be to lift your tamper vertically rather than to pull it out at an angle and maybe even at a slower pace. We wanna cancel out some vacuum that could be harming mm -hmm. your book. Cause mm -hmm. you know, for your yeah. attractions, you kind of, um, especially after you puck raked and we've got a level of temper to be offset like that, it, it essentially means something is uh, messing with your puck integrity. So it may be something to review at, uh, but it could also be not that at all. So the one thing I, so I, I do tamp very level and using the leveling tamper yeah. and just I like lightly just kind of pick up from there. Right. Okay. Um, but the one thing that I would say that definitely could be factoring into that and i don't know how to work around that is that b plus screen right I, the way that i'm oh, i'm a clean one uh let me try to demonstrate what i do because this is something that's uh i guess kind of difficult so let me knock this one out so when attempting to put this in there, it's very easy to kind of drop it in at an angle. Right. So what I'm typically doing is just grabbing it kind of like this, fingers just a little bit out, getting my fingers touching and dropping in. Yes. Because right. there's, I don't know yeah, how else to. I can see, I can see the A heavy yeah. metal thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot you were using a spacer actually as well. If anybody else has any advice on that one, I, I don't have a solution for that. Uh, yeah, it's a, very, it's a very good point, actually. It's like, um, you know, simply the technique and how you're going to put screen on will, yeah, it's another factor to sort of put in and to consider. Um, I don't think this this tool has any uh, proper tool to you know to, to put it onto the bed, right? So you always do it that way. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I maybe didn't hear something you said in there. Yeah, I don't think there's a proper tool to place the mesh on top of the coffee bed. So that's always that's always the case that you just leave it down, you jump down into the pad, into the bed, and uh, 
I don't know, it could create some, uh, some effect on that. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. we put everything in place and uh, I'm definitely, the side that it's leaning towards is where my thumb mm -hmm. is. Uh. So I wonder if I might play with that some more. Yeah, yeah, it might be something to look into. And um, I think it's quite high, uh, high chance that it could be that. Um, I mean, even for example, like when I used to train people, um, they put all this hard work uh, preparing the perk and, and, and being very careful. But the, the place where they would uh, always fall was re-engaging the water filter. And they would be, you know, they would see experienced baristas move at pace with a sense of urgency. And, you know, they'd literally whack in the water filter. Uh, and obviously you're, you're increasing the chance of a ha hairline fracture. Um, mm. Sometimes you can't even see it on the top, but it will exhibit itself as a, as a channel. Um, so even, even as soon as you prepared and, you know, you tamped your puck, it, it, you just treat it as something very fragile. Um, because, oh, you know, I, I'm tamping on top of that. So it, what I was showing before tamping, I'm then dropping that in on a untamped coffee. Oh, let's see. And so you're tamping it on the mic. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I mean, it's very easy to move the bed in that case, just under that amount of weight. Yes, for sure. So could it be that the B plus screen is actually digging itself into the puck because it possibly is being dropped deeper at that point? Right. Uh, so yes. Um, I have otherwise had pretty good results like it it seems to not salvage <laughs> uh it's not like the adaptive profiles or best practice or anything but it is it, it does seem to give a little bit more leeway in um yeah. it, it just having things go well without having the perfect grind <laughs> have you um i'm sure you may have had done already but previously uh, tamped and then put your B plus screen on top of that? I've not actually tried that. This is the first time that I've, I've seen it offset twice. Oh, I, like I said, I normally only make like yeah. one espresso yeah. a day. <laughs> so that's the first time that I've noticed it's in the same spot twice right. and, right. you know, also lines up with where my thumb is and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. Next time you, 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 you come to pull a shot, try, try it the way we've just said and, um, See if there's a difference. It may not make any difference, um, but I would suspect that we might get that get rid of that offset, um, and I think that will be a big improvement towards your extractions. Um, but in terms of um, your what you're tasting right now, um, how is it tasting as compared to without the B plus screen? I. I don't remember the last time I haven't used the B plus screen. <laughs> uh, between these two, um, so the one that had the, uh, so I did use a B plus on both of those extractions. Uh -huh. uh, the one that has the donut extraction, the, the last shot, it is missing just a little bit of sweetness. Right, yes. That's, that's the one thing I'm picking up. I mean, it, they're extremely similar, but just a hair sweeter on the, uh, deep WDT. Yes. This is a live experiment. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I think perhaps you can, Michael, you can try to tempt it first. And then the next one, you just uh, <clears throat> place the B plus filter on top of the temp. Yeah. Just to find out whether it's really, really that's the case. Sure. Mm -hmm. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> Hopefully I don't run out of decaf here. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anyone else on here have experience with the B plus screen? Um, and maybe um, give us some insights in, in 
are they tamping with the B plus screen um, from the offset or are they tamping and then putting the, the, the screen on the top afterwards? So Lucas says he also uses the um, B plus screen, Michael, uh, and he tamps uh, first and then places it afterwards. Um. I'm also curious, Luca, um, what, what do you see um, are the benefits in using the B plus screen um, from obviously from a user who's got a DE1 and uh, has, has been using it? Um, I presume you're using, using them on a, a lot more lighter roast coffees. Hiya. Hi. Um, sorry, are we getting echo? Uh, just a little bit, but you're, you're, I can hear you. Yeah. Just give me a second. Hello. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I've got two instances of Zoom running. <laughs> um, can you can you hear me okay now? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, Look, I don't, I don't have a strong view on the B plus. I've got it. I've tried it a few times. Um, seems to tamping and then putting it on top seems to make the shots, you know, come out orderly and consistently. Um, but beyond that, I, I, I just, I don't know. So that's about all I can say. I can pull a shot now if you guys like, and you can see. Yeah, I, I would be interested because um, I'd like to see it on, on some regular beans because um, obviously decaf sort of looks a little bit different compared to regular beans. Um, yeah, sure. Really, yeah, <clears throat> yeah Luca, no worries. Yo. What do you think with the B plus and without the B plus? Well, I just found it um, a little more consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, but I I haven't looked into anything properly. I don't know, Dennis. That's that's what I'm saying. I, I don't have an opinion. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um yeah, I've got I've got like some filter roast Ethiopian coffee here from Say. Um so it's, it's not a bad one to use because it's got that sort of delicate aroma that kind of falls off and disappears. So it gives you a very good insight as to like whether or not you're, you know, extracting it well. Mm -hmm. If your goal is to kind of to do that. Um, so I can give that a shot. Um, I've got this here, if you guys want to, you know, see what that does. Uh, paper on the bottom. So this is the high uniformity burrs, um, which are different from the Lagom high uniformity burrs. Uh, is the difference in size or the actual geometry of the burrs itself? The geometry is totally different. Um, and this is what I was saying before, the, um, the Lagom burrs, what they call high uniformity does not map at all onto the right. high uniformity 
from the 98 millimeter set. They've come up with their own name and they've applied it inconsistently with Hansung's names from SSP. Right. Um, just to make it difficult for people. I think <laughs> um, I think that one of their other SSP burrs or something someone was saying is similar, like equivalent geometry to what is high uniformity here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the, the problem, this is what I was getting at before. Uh, I gather what they were saying was that the problem with some of the high <laughs> uniformity burrs where you had to grind pretty much with touching is yeah. that the outfall pathways are quite big. Yes. And so I think what they did was they had them cut with shorter outfall pathways huh. so that you get, so that as when the burrs are at the same spacing, you get a finer grind. Yeah. So that's, that's what they're doing. Oh. But what burr manufacturers and grinder manufacturers don't tell you is that that changes the way that the filter coffee extracts and tastes. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. Yeah. So people say oh i want this feature of having of being able to grind fine enough for espresso and that's where you get you know the old um that's where you get the old people saying that the old malkernig ek43 burrs were really great for filter yeah. and the new ones aren't as good well the new ones have been ground lower yeah. so that they can they're more able to do espresso so there we go uh, now I'd better grab grab my phone. I can see if I can extract mine pretty quickly here. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Oh yeah, go go ahead. Yeah, okay. see if this is any different. This was everything else the same. The only difference being tamping before putting uh, deep WDT this time. Yes, um, but just putting the B plus on top after tamping. seeming difference there. The, I, um, I did see a difference in that it did seem to, the flow rate, uh, without looking at the graph, it did seem to come out a lot easier and a lot less restriction. Um, but yes, you, I think the offset was still there. Um, but yeah, difficult to say, this one. Yeah. Luca, your phone is black. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, I think you're on mute there, Luca. Could we just um, unmute yourself, maybe? Yeah. There we go. Great. There we go. Excellent. Can hear you now. Um, so, sorry, uh, Michael, did you want to taste your shot and talk about that or do you want me to have a go or sorry Michael I think you're on mute now <laughs> sorry well I let's go ahead and go I let mine cool for a minute before I taste yeah great okay so here's the here's the porta filter I'm just I've just slotted the B plus on like that so we'll come here now. I should I should mention I've got a um, I've got one of the prototype Alton dispersion screens in. So I can't quite uh -huh. remember which one. I think I saw. So that. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember if this is the inside dispersion screen or like the internal flow or not. Um, but let's let's do this. 
Um, and so this is this is a blooming pressurized ramp shot. Sorry, this is um bloom dynamic exit. So it's not a pressurized bloom. Right. And it's going to go into a um it's going to go into a pressure profile. Okay. Um and I'm using the 15 gram basket. So this shot should really fall apart really like terribly. Um, yeah, so I'll just have a look. We're at 12 grams and it should speed up quite a bit because that's the characteristics of this fur. 24, 25, 26. So I want to get about 37. Did not go well. Anyway, um, so there we go. So let's let's have a look. So you can see that the flow rate topped out at about one point eight mils. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know. So that that that's that. Um, it was somewhat orderly. So I don't know. Let's let's see what it's like. Looks like it should taste pretty good. Yeah, it's it's got like quite a bit of sort of um, uh, lemon, a little bit of bergamot. Um, and I guess one, one of the things that's, um, you know, sort of um, catch 22 with flavor clarity is that if you get greater clarity of flavor, you get greater clarity of the good and the bad flavors, and so with with this one, it's um, it's older coffee, and it it tastes a bit old. Um, I'm going to go and water this down with some hot water, uh, and we'll see what that's like. So I might just pop onto mute, um, and maybe Michael, you can. All right, Michael, how's your shot just now? About to find out. <laughs> it's incredibly close. Uh, I mean, it's it's good. It's decaf still. <laughs> as long as you enjoy it, that's all it counts. <laughs> I'm typically using a, like a medium decaf in, well, I mean, most decaps I find are pretty squarely medium or worse, so, uh, or darker, I should say. Um, but uh, I'm typically using those in milk drinks. I tend to go for more lighter roast. It's just at this hour, decaf seemed like the right route. <laughs> yes. Cool. Understand, understand. I think uh, Lucas stomping out his uh, spent puck. Just having a look. The uh, paper on the back. Nice. Very nice. And I think it's, a, it's, it's um, quite an interesting technique to use, um, especially when you're trying to analyze the pup preparation you're using. Um, sometimes, you know, you may see cracks or hairline cracks somewhere. And you know you can see if you can uh, essentially improve your techniques from getting rid of those cracks. I can see Luke is uh, using boiling water from uh, separately from the uh, DE one as well, which is always good. Protect your machine as much as possible. I like that. All right, fantastic. So um, two hours has passed, surprisingly enough. Um, and I think we're going to have to call it here. Um, we're going to be um, on a Zoom call next week as well. So, if, you know, if you're practicing and you want to find out, you know, you've got some more questions or um, you, you want to um, try out something this week and then get feedback on it for next week, that's great. Um, feel free to join us next week. Me and Dennis will be here. Uh, I think John will be here at the start of the conversation as well. 
and um so if there's nothing else to be asked i think we'll uh i think we'll call it there i did I have you to say one, something one quick question yeah because i noticed this after knocking this last one out so uh -huh. the stream was more down on this side right yes cause the handle yeah if you can see there's there's a chunk up there I, I'd, oh yes here let me see if i can get the lighting better yeah there okay. yes i can see that so um from the top of my head we could possibly explain this by more of the finer particles ending up in that corner um so when we are dwt or and if for this case it was a light rake right we weren't going deep uh, this one was a deep this one was deep yeah. so what could have happened is we could have well, distributed the back more the where I was going. yeah exactly yes yes so i guess it's um for the next few shots you could maybe focus your attention on that corner and maybe do an extra two or three little circles there and and see if that works and um yeah i think um knocking out the puck and having a look will, will help you there and, and see if you're you're having an effect. Yeah, this was great because I I learned a lot just by pulling three back to back shots for a change. That's great. <laughs> that was nice. Thank you. All right. All right, cool. I think okay. that's it for today. Thank yep. you very much. And uh, have a good weekend. Yep, you too. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks, Dennis and Paul. Bye-bye. Bye, John. Bye.